Hello and welcome back to another Minecraft Let's Play video by me, Foxy Dotel, here on the Truly Bedrock Survival Realm and we've got some bad news and some good news and some just general all-round news. The bad news is, as I'm going to show you a clip of in the minute, my uh, my iron farm thing completely broke. I uh, You might have seen my bug report video I put out earlier this week or maybe it was even last week. I don't know when this video is going to be coming out. But yeah, um... Big bug in the game that broke everything and I discovered that and there's a little clip that I'm going to play you now uh, all about that. But, oh actually before I play you that clip I just want to tell you what we're going to be doing today and we're going to be doing some redstoney things. We're going to be looking at potentially making an automatic vine farm. I don't know if that's possible. We're going to try. I want to convert. Do you know I was talking about a few episodes ago that automatic sugarcane farm thing and making it really big to get loads of sugarcane? Forget it, we're going to tear it out and do something even better. And I'm also thinking about adding a one of my amazing super furnace array things, but I might do that outside of episode. I might do that in episode, I'm not sure. We'll see how the episode comes along. But for now, here's that clip of me being utterly confused about why... Yeah, my farm doesn't work. Okay, I've just had a very unsuccessful AFK in here. It seems I got kicked uh, not long after being AFK. Or maybe, maybe I was actually AFK longer than I thought. Because I've already popped my head upstairs today. And there is a little bit of an issue. Something that seems to happen on Realms is that the village centre can shift when the game logs in and out. Now, I got kicked out last night, but not after... We must have had, well, we've got iron golems spawning on the roof. But look, a pillager patrol. A pillager patrol has turned up to come and sort out, yeah, to come and try and get my villagers, which I've never had. I've never had a pillager patrol. But these guys, look, they're trying really hard to get my iron golem. Are they killing my cats? Oh, they killed each other now. You're killing each other. Yeah, um, I've no idea how those iron golems have spawned up there because I, I thought that was too high up. I guess it's not. So we're going to have to do some work on uh, making the roof spawn proof. Yeah, I guess there are some blocks up here that I guess are spawnable because of the way I've done the roof. So we'll have to make the roof spawn proof. But yeah, the, the pillager patrols we're going to have to be careful of. So it is a good job I made this wall. And it's a good job that we've got iron golems for them to target. Because if they hit these guys, that's going to ruin the whole thing. So you, sir, are not very nice. Go away. Chop. Before I went AFK, I did another village centre check and it had moved from the villager that was over there to this one here. So I got rid of his bed and moved it back to the bell and I guess it's probably moved again. So I think every time you reload the game or every time you log off or go away from the area, the, the number of or the order of the villagers, whichever one becomes the main villager, must change. I know Realms is weird and a bit buggy anyway, compared to single player, so maybe I'm wrong. I might be wrong, I'm, I'm guessing. I've literally just woke up and come back to find this, but I got a comment from somebody else saying that they think that the village centre changes. Well, in fact, they said that they all of the workstations and things for the villagers change when you log out and reload the world, but I don't think that's the case, but we can find that out if we break. Oh no, if we break these workstations, he's going to escape. If we break this guy's workstation, hopefully it'll be him that gets upset about it. You didn't mind me breaking your workstation then, did you? Hmm, weird. Something strange going on here. And it's night time now, why aren't they going to bed? Is it because there was villagers about? Does that freak them out? Or are they all broken again? Why aren't they going to sleep? It's really late, guys. Go to bed. I mean, they're not doing the unhappy villager thing though they should be getting really unhappy because they can't find their bed let me fly away and come back and see if we get an unha any unhappiness they're not sleeping oh i think it's broken i think i've completely messed it up oh it was so perfect it has to go and break doesn't it thank you very much bedrock edition you suck you so suck oh it's so annoying Do you know i tested this thing for hours and hours and hours i literally ran hours with the test in that testing world and I went out of the area but they didn't ever go out of my render distance they went out of my simulation distance but they never went out of my render distance so I guess I guess when they actually do unload or when they go out of your render distance then the order of the villages change and a different villager becomes the head villager that's the only thing I can think is what's going on here because there's no reason for them to not change but then like I say, they should be doing the angry villager particles if they're 
if they've disconnected from their beds and they can't sleep. I'm putting these on so that I can close the flaps so that if another villager or a pillager raid comes along, we can, yeah, we can still trade with them, but they can't see them quite as easy. And we can always open the flaps in the morning if we want it to look nice. Why? Why, Bedrock Edition? Why can't we have anything nice? Why can't we have any? I've gone to the effort. I've gone to so much effort of making this perfect and making the villagers link to the right bed and link to the right workstation. Why are you taking that away from me? I need to find a way in here so I can see what's going on. I'm going to hop in there and put that workstation back there. Somebody should have connected to it, but they didn't. Nobody did. So they're just completely bugged out at this point. So maybe they've not disconnected from their beds and their workstation. Then maybe they've just bugged out for whatever reason. And maybe it will fix itself after a restart. Maybe it's to do with this zombie pigman over here. Maybe they've spotted him and they don't like him. Who knows? I really don't know. I've got no idea what's going on. I wonder if it's got anything to do with the other villagers that are in this hole over here. I doubt it. I mean, these guys should all still be okay. They're in their boat still. Yeah, they, they look all right. I mean, they could, I suppose, technically be affecting it because I think they're in range, maybe. Oh, I have no idea at this point. I really have no idea. Well, <laughs> I've figured something out. Minecraft is definitely broken. The reason this village is not working is not because the villagers have decided they don't live here anymore. <laughs> it's because the village has completely shifted. Now, if I go into the data that we had before, this village is no longer where it was. So it's the same info we had before. This is the information for the village. This shows you where the center of the village and everything is. And this shows you how many people live in the village. Now, apparently, there's only four villagers live in my village. So, and the village center, the village center has moved. The village is supposed to be 64 blocks by 64 blocks wide, but if we look at my fancy spreadsheet, the 64, the village is 700 blocks wide by 1,300 blocks long, which means that something, somehow, this village has connected to a block or a workstation or another village 700 blocks, no, 1,300 blocks away somewhere. Right? And not only has it done that, but it's also forgotten who lives there. So, yeah, it's completely broken. I'm going to guess there's probably another entry for my village as well. Okay, I found another village which seems to suit my village, but it's only got cats in it. <laughs> it's in the perfect location for mine, but there's nothing in it apart from cats. It's only got cats in it. It's got 11 cats, but that's not... <laughs> That's not my village. <laughs> not my village. <laughs> and there is literally no other reference to any village that could be mine within all that. So I'm going to log back in and go and find out where, what they've connected to elsewhere. Those four villagers. Okay, so I've took a screenshot of one of the bits of information I found from that program. And it shows here that this, this villager, this villager here, has connected to a bed at my base so these are the coordinates minus 6 12 by 10 22 so that's in my base and they've connected to a bell at my base so the bell is the village center at my base but they've connected to a barrel here at 54 by minus 270 which is miles from my base so let's grab ourselves some more rockets and let's go find 54 by minus 270 and see what's there yeah we're coming up on the back of the shopping area here 54 by minus 270. Well, there's a very big barrel here. <laughs> Could be there. Could be there. Let's see. Where's this new barrel that they've connected to? Is it one of the ones in here? No, this is too close. Is it in Daphne's shop? It looks like it could be in Daphne's shop. 54 by minus 270. This one! <laughs> My villager thinks that this is their barrel. Great. Okay. Right, that's not right at all, is it? Okay. Um, <laughs> hmm, my villager has claimed a barrel in Daphne's shop. That's not right at all. Right, I'm going to have to do a little bit of a video. For, oh, look, there's a gumball machine over there. Right, I'm getting distracted. I'm going to have to do a little bit of a video for Mo Yang to show them that this bug exists and have, ask them to fix their game and also for Truly Bedrock because if I'm... If, if my village has done this, then I'm sure other people's will have uh, messed up like this as well. Because my village now expands the entire area between... 
the shopping centre, which is the other side of the map, and, and home. Let's have a look at the spawn map for a second. My village takes up that area there, so all that massive area inside of the world, that's my village apparently. So that can either mean one thing, that I must, there mustn't be any villages or stuff in between my base and the shopping area, but it's managed to connect to that barrel. So I guess one of my villagers must have really wanted to be a fisherman and just looked and looked and looked and looked for a barrel and someone must have loaded that area and it spotted it and it connected to it. That's not good. Well, so there you go. Now you're completely up to speed with everything that's going on with that. If you're still confused as to what the problem was, then feel free to go back and watch my bug report video. I did that. There's a link to it in the description and in my channel. Right, first things first then is let's have a look at building a vine farm. So this is my standard sort of vine farm design. It takes ages, you've got to wait for the vines to grow and then either use silk touch or some shears to get the vines. I like silk touch because it's got mending on it. I can mend it easily. But yeah, it takes ages and ages and ages to get any vines. Now I'm thinking, and I might I might be like barking up the wrong tree completely here, but seems that we can now use shears in a dispenser to automatically shear sheep. Can we automatically shear vines? And I want to find out. Now I've no idea if this will actually work, but it's worth a try. No, no, it doesn't work. What a shame. What a shame. What if about if we put those on front of there? No. Oh, boo! It was such a good idea! Boo! There goes my automatic vine, plan, vine farm plan, I guess. On with the next project already. And the next project is to actually get some decent resources. Look at this, it's pitiful. I've got one dispenser, a couple of pistons. I've hardly got anything, so I need to do some serious redstone gathering if we're going to be doing some serious redstone build. This is kind of working now, although the villagers don't work in terms of trading, but it is producing iron golems, and Big Chicken did a few hours at this last night, and we was able to get, if we look in our jewel chest, let's break this down into iron, just over a stack. I think I had about six blocks of iron already, so let's take those out of the equation, let's turn those into that. Yeah, so we got just over a stack of iron from it in a couple, well, in in an evening, in about, in well, however long he was AFK for before he got kicked. So it's not ideal, but it is kind of working. So while we're in the area, we might get some more iron spawning in there, but we're going to need more than that. We need a decent amount of iron. So what we're going to do is first of all, go to our shops and see if we've sold anything because we're selling things for iron. And then we're going to go mining with our efficiency five or haste two, whatever it's called, amazing beacon -y thing. Okay, I'm feeling lucky, I'm feeling lucky. I'm going to have to dodge around a little bit here. Oh, look, Tiz is here. Hey, Tiz. Yeah, we're going to have to be a little bit careful because I actually came in Daphne's shop the other day when I was trying to sort out that thing um, for the villagers and it all blew up because there was a creeper hiding in here. So I best not go in there. And I did request that she maybe put doors on her shop to stop creepers going in. And then, apparently, zombies broke her doors down trying to go in there. Right, now let's check our shop, see if we've got any profits on sugar boxes. None! No one's bought any sugar boxes. Books. Diamonds! We don't want diamonds! We want... We want iron! Boo! Okay, well we'll take those. Half of me, half of slack. Oh, and diamonds here. Oh, and iron! There we go, look. So we're right, we're gonna have to make a, a foxy pile and a slack pile here. We're gonna be fair. We're, fair. we're a fair type of person. Even though I should technically be charging Slack a little bit of rent because we're using my shop front for this. I put all the effort into building this amazing shop front. And uh, yeah, Slack's done very little. There's one in there. Why, why have they left all them in there and then put one in there? That doesn't make any sense. And considering it's three diamonds a stack, why have we got one diamond? Hmm. Think somebody might have been pinching some diamonds there. But that's good because it gives us an equal number for half for me and half for Slack, which is nice. There we go. Shop profit, 70 diamonds and 32 iron ingots. And obviously you can use that diamond as well, but you'll probably have to rename it. So there we go. Very nice. Very nice in this gloomy, horrible, smelly, rainy day. Boo. Okay, before I go mining, I would like some shulker boxes in order to actually collect the stuff that I've mined. I know I could put it in these chests, but I'm trying very hard to keep organized without tons and tons of chests. And the problem is, I've already filled up all of my shulker boxes. I have no shulker boxes left that aren't filled up. I've got these ones here with all the stuff for that thing. I've got all the ones in my ender chest. I don't have any left to put anything in. So I'm going to have to go back to the shopping area, buy some of our own mining slag shulker boxes. That's a bit weird, isn't it? 
And then, yeah, and then come back again. So I'll be back in a minute, guys. Okay, I'm over at the shopping district and I'm looking in our sugar boxes and they're so expensive. Eight diamonds. I could go over here next door <laughs> and I could buy them for six. I could buy them for six diamonds. And technically, I'll be stopping Silent Whisper selling them to anyone else. I'll be remo removing his stock again. So let's see if we can afford to buy him out again because I like buying out Silent Whisper and it means then I don't have to steal the stock from our shop. Excuse me, I need, I need a line so I can do line things. Oh man, we can we can buy five. Oh man, and that leaves us with four diamonds. Yes, definitely is worth it. One, two, three, four, five. There we go. Silent whisper. Ha! Have diamonds, not money, you fool. <laughs> and I've got loads more sugar boxes. <laughs> You've got less stock to sell anyone. <laughs> genius, genius at work. Ha <laughs> ha. But Foxy, don't tell, you've already started digging an underground massive hole near, near Slack's base. Yes, I know. I know, but I want one near my base because, first of all, the one near Slack's base is pretty much finished. And second of all, I like having a big hole at my base too. Why can't I have one? Slack got one. I want one as well. It's annoying that you've got to dig out the area for the beacon without the beacon effect. <laughs> if you had the beacon effect, it'd be really easy to put the beacon where you wanted to put the beacon. Hmm, okay, I paid for haste too. But it's not giving me haste too, and I've just realised I've got no way back up. I can't get back up again. I suppose I can fly. Oh dear. I didn't think this through, did I? But I'm guessing there's a solid block in the way at the top. Oh dear. Right, where's my rockets? Let's see if we can fly out of here. Um. Let's... Ow! No! Come on, fly! No! There we... Wow, I don't want to keep landing on things. Stop it! Fly! No, nearly. Oh dear, now we're inside a block. This is not a good idea. Not a good idea at all. Oh, I'm so close. I just need to get up there. Huh, fly. Flow. No. Ow. Oh, I don't have. I do have feather falling. Hmm. I'm just falling a long way down. Fly. Come on. To the top. There we go. We <laughs> got out. Um. Right, what's blocking it then? Oh, I see what's blocking it. It's the thing that the bell's on. Right. Okay, let's break some of this away then. Oh. Oh no, my lanterns are going to go in. Oh dear. Oh dear. Oh, oh dear. Um, and it would be on that one there, wouldn't it? It would definitely be on that one. Let's... Oh no, there we go. It's come through. Good. Okay then, I've dug out quite a lot of this room already and I've pretty much gone through two pickaxes, so I'm going to have to stop for a little bit. I've managed to get a whole bunch of ores and things from this. I've got some diamonds, I've got some iron and gold and coal and all that good stuff. I've also got tons of diorite and andesite and granite. I've got a little bit of gravel and dirt and I've got absolutely tons of stone. And if I go over here as well, tons of cobblestone. So I can't actually carry it all, so I'm going to have to take and all these sugar boxes back, take it all upstairs, empty them all out. But there is a little bit of a problem. And the problem is that both of my pickaxes are pretty much run out and I've still got no way out of here. I don't know how to get back to the surface and flying up last time didn't do as many favors. So we need to have a staircase out of here, but both of my pickaxes are pretty much done. Uh, I guess for this in particular time, I guess we're probably just gonna have to try and fly out and then maybe yeah dig our way back down again next time i think so let's try it I can't see anything oh we made it first time oh that was pretty handy then so we could use a water elevator and a drop chute to get back down that would be pretty good but that's a lot of faffing about and a lot of effort for not a lot of gain really when yeah we'll, we'll see we'll see what happens Right, then all my tools and equipment are fully repaired and I have smelted down all of the... St I say all of the stuff, where's the rest of it? Oh, there it is. All of the stuff that we got so far. So let's now head back down. But before I head back down, I actually want to make a staircase down there so that we don't have to keep falling down that hole. Well, we need some stairs to stop yourself from bouncing up it, but this looks pretty good. I put glowstone all the way down it because I've pretty much got an infinite supply of this stuff now that Slack and I are in business together, so yeah. I might as well use it. I've come through yet another mine shaft that's in the area and another one here. And this comes all the way down. I'm just going to block this up because we don't want that big hole there. It comes all the way down to where we've been working, which is ideal, really. It's perfect. Absolutely brilliant. 
Well, this is interesting. The Wandering Trader has appeared down here, which means that my suspicions are correct. This Wandering Trader will appear at the lowest possible point below the village center. So if you dig all the way down to bedrock, like we have done, the Wandering Trader will appear at bedrock. While I'm down here digging away, thinking about things to myself as I do while I'm down in places like this digging away, I've been thinking about everybody's been raving about the new or the next update of Minecraft. They've, for the last few updates, people have been going on about it being a cave update, basically making caves more interesting, which in theory sounds like an amazing idea. Sounds like a really good idea that you would go into a cave and the cave would look actually more like a cave in real life with stalactites and stalagmites and interesting features, maybe even underground biomes a little bit like in Terraria where, Terraria where you've got like glowing mushroomy areas and all sorts of weird stuff going underground. It all sounds really good. Even new ores maybe and new things to collect, that would be really good as well. And like specialist cave monsters maybe that you find underground all those things sound really good i really like all the ideas all of those ideas but the problem is i'm digging this cave out with haste too because i want all of the resources in it and rather than just like wandering around it digging them out i'm i'm speed mining this is what we do this is how we play the game these days we get a haste two beacon and we just destroy massive areas underground and my problem right now is that I've got an inventory full of load of rubbish. I've got gravel, I've got stone, I've got andesite, I've got diorite, I've got granite, I've got gravel, I've got flint, I've got, you name it, I've even got wood and spider stuff, I've got mob drops from when I kill things, and I can't carry it all, I cannot carry it all, I have to keep going back to my chest over there and dropping it all off. Even if I had loads of shulker boxes, I'd have to keep stopping, filling them up, picking them up, stopping, filling them up, picking them up, the problem is if we've got a cave update with even more cavey stuff, that's even more stuff to have to carry while you're underground, which is sounds good in theory, but when you're doing stuff like this, it'd just be really annoying. It'd be really, really annoying. So I think the only solution you could really do for that would be to allow us to have a bigger inventory, like expandable inventory. So maybe have a particular chest you could put up here that you can get from killing a particular mob that expands your inventory to double the size just so that you can actually pick all the stuff up. It would look nice and people would find it interesting for a little while and then everyone would be fed up of picking everything up. And I've heard other YouTubers complaining about, you know, all of the different stone variants and having to lug them about and carry them with them and be short of an inventory space. And all these new blocks and new items and new features they add in is just more stuff to carry and we've got no room to carry it. They're not giving, they give us sugar boxes, which are absolutely amazing, don't get me wrong, but it's not practical to keep putting them down, filling them up, putting them down, filling them up. It's, it's not a practical thing to do. We need a permanent bigger inventory or some way of doing that, like a backpack or something, it, before we get a cave update, or maybe both at the same time, I don't mind, but if they do a cave update next and they don't do any sort of inventory management system, then we're gonna be really struggling. And things like this would just become, this will become hard work because you'd be forever trying to sort out your inventory. It's gravel time! This is ridiculous. It's one of the biggest patches of gravel I've ever seen in my entire life, surrounded by lava. It's very dangerous and I must get rid of it all. Get rid of it all, this silly gravel stuff. It's everywhere. Ah, gravel! Ah, water! Water and gravel! It's a bad mix! We can get this, guys! Watch out for that lava! What lava? It's obsidian now! Oh, good, that's okay then. Dear annoying water source, please stop. More gravel! Ah, gravel, gravel! It's everywhere! Look at it! It's ridiculous! Why is there so many gravels? Who put all of these gravels here? Hmm? Where is gravel man? Or woman? Or person? Them? I got all the gravel, guys. I killed it all. Apart from that death, but we'll, we'll ignore that bit. But we won't ignore this bit. Gravel! Ah, gravel! Ah. Oh, it's a gravelly workout. Oh, look at that, nearly an inventory full of the stuff. Quite handy these... What? I just got rid of all this water. 
Stop coming back when I get rid of you. Shoo, 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 shoo. Thank you. Better. Ah, I hear you flip. Coming back when I don't want you. Who, who do you think you are? Staying there, you're not even a full water source block. Cheeky, cheeky. No. Hey, psh, get out of it. Ah, gravel. Whew. With clothes. Hmm, my gravels are not fitting in my chest. Where hath all the gravel gone? Long time passing. I don't know, I can't remember the words of that. That's something I used to sing in school, guys, when I was like five. Something to do with flowers disappearing or something. I don't know. Stupid song, anyway. It's almost as bad as all things bright and beautiful, all creatures great and small, all things what? No, not everything is beautiful. You have seen die all right, right? Whew. Well, if it isn't my old friend Gravel, getting in my way. Who do you think you are with your with your graveliness? Requiring a different tool to be used to mine you. I don't think so, Mr. Gravel. Every time I see you, you're a gunner. Apart from in the floor, you're fine in the floor. I don't mind you there, you can be in the floor. It's when you're above me, you're a problem. Or in my face. Or choking me to death. Look out! Lava! Oh, got it. Expert, level 99. You don't have 99 levels, you've got 29 levels. Shut up. I'm level 99 on the inside. Now listen here, Gravel Face. I thought we'd already come to an agreement. Obviously, you're not listening to me or taking me seriously, so. <laughs> Chop! I make you small and floaty. Yeah, I'm gonna show you. Not suffocating anyone now, are you, Gravel Face? Ha! <laughs> Okay, I've just about burnt through another couple of pickaxes there. Not quite, but I have been called by Mr. Lizard to go and do some recording with him, which won't be in today's episode, because it's got nothing to do with what we're doing today. So that will probably come up in the next episode, I imagine. But just in case you're interested in all of the fun, lovely stuff that we've got now, we've got a double chest of cobble there, double chest of cobble there, a load of rubbish in there. We've got stone coming out of our eyeballs. We got... Um, this is all from what we've got all together today, but I've got nearly another couple of stacks of iron, I've got some more gold, I've got tons of redstone and lapis and diamonds and gold and coal and all those things. We've got even more andesite and diorite. I've emptied this chest out once already. We've got loads of gravel. We've got a little bit of dirt as well. So, we are well on our way. What am I doing? To be able to restock our redstone box with all that iron that we've got, which is amazing. But, like I say, I'm going to have to disappear now, so I'll join back in with you a little while later after I've been playing with Slack for a bit. Okay, welcome back. <laughs> yeah, for you, no time would have passed at all. For me, a lot's gone on. It's actually been a couple of days, and I'm not going to tell you what happened in the video, but needless to say, Slack and I went end raiding and managed to come back with a full emerald beacon? What? But that's good news because we've been digging out this area to try and get loads of iron and coal and gold and diamonds so that we can, you know, make our redstone stuff again. And now, well, I got all of this stuff, but look, I got all my beacon blocks back. So if I get out my jewel box, which is in here, you see I've got all my diamonds back in there. I've got a stack of iron blocks there and I've got all of these here. So I am now iron and diamond rich. Thanks for this beacon. And yeah, you're going to have to watch the next one to find out how that all came about. Anyway, what that means now is I can actually go and restock my redstone box so we can actually build these farms. So what I'm going to do is take all of this stuff. I'm going to break all of this down and make it all nice and shiny and block typey and all that sort of thing. And then I'm going to, yeah, sort my redstone box out and I'll see you when that's all done. Before I do that, I just want to mention that this iron farm should technically be working now. I should be able to actually fix all my villagers. According to the Minecraft developers, the latest 1.1.1.4 hotfix should have fixed the issue I had where the village was expanding, but I can't see anything in the change logs on that, so I'm not 100% convinced that that's actually happened. So for now, I'm not going to even bother fiddling with those villagers. They can stay as they are, and occasionally I get iron down there, which is good. Now, the problem is I have no bed, and I can't sleep because if I put a bed down, it ruins everything for these guys, so I need to go 
Yeah, get myself a bed and ignore these shulker boxes. They're, they're nothing to do with anything. You have to go over there and do it. Can't do it here. Mess everything up if you do. See if it actually, uh, if anyone connects to it while I put it down. I don't think they will. Let's hope not. Oh, while I'm uh, while I'm laying all these out and putting these blocks down so that I can get all the resources from them, I just want to show you I found another bug in the game. You know what I'm like for finding bugs. If I place these down, I can place them in a row like that. Absolutely no problem whatsoever. But redstone ore, I cannot. I cannot place it next to each other in a row because if you do that, it disappears and the last one goes light like this because it thinks there's a block touching it. If I do that, they'll all just be the normal colour. But if you put something on top of a redstone block, can you see it goes lighter? But for some reason, the block disappears. It doesn't come back again. Now, if I put one there now, it's fine but I can't put a block next to one that's dark. I can only put one next to one that's light, which is really annoying because it means for all the redstone blocks that I've got, I've got to literally do this. So what I might actually do, because Slack's got like 10 billion redstone in the witch farm, I might actually keep these redstone blocks for decorative purposes. I'll just keep them as the block type rather than breaking them down into the actual redstone dust. Okay, after doing all of the smelting and organizing and things like that, we've just had a cat spawn over here apparently. Why over here? Oh no, and look, an iron golem's just got... Oh man. Oh man, the village center's shifted again. Iron golem, that's not the right place for you at all. This thing sucks. Right, anyway. <laughs> yeah, I've got all my jewels and stuff sorted out now. Look, I've got 39 blocks of diamond, 64 blocks of iron, nearly see nearly 64 blocks of gold all the lapis and coal and redstone stuff there and then this is my overflow box so i've got tons of redstone and none of that is from the witch farm that's all stuff i've mined which is ridiculous tons of lapis and tons of iron as well which is very very good for what we're going to be doing this is my redstone box and as you can see it's pretty empty so what i want to do next is i want to uh, fly please no you're not flying today oh please i want to completely tear this thing down Demolish the entire thing and in its place I'm going to build a giant melon and pumpkin farm which is going to feed literally straight into composters which is going to completely ruin this thing isn't it? Oh look I can see they're, oh, they're, they're reconnecting and disconnect. Oh, oh boo! Boo stupid village! Yeah if I do a melon and pumpkin farm there it's going to completely ruin this isn't it? Oh man! There we go, that's the entire thing completely demolished and while I've been doing that I've been thinking about where I'm going to put the melon and pumpkin farm and I am going to put it here and I'm just not going to worry about those connecting to the composters because I've decided I want to be able to use this area for farms and if I can't put anything down because those guys connecting to it I'm never going to be able to build any farms so I think the smart thing to do is to just forget about this completely and then eventually if they do actually manage to fix it so that they can you know the workstations don't switch out and the beds don't switch out then we'll rebuild that again somewhere else out of range of all this but yeah for now that is just i'm not happy with it i'm not happy at all so forget it okay i'm just in the process of making these dispensers and we have a little bit of a problem in the fact that the dispensers can't use the enchanted bows however one thing to be thankful for from this new update is the fact that we now have grindstone. So if I get all of the enchanted bows that I've picked up out of here, we'll pop it down here. Now we need to be careful that we don't punt, put the wrong thing in here. Now I know I could combine some of these with that rubbish bow. I've got to make a good bow, but it really doesn't matter for now. I'm quite happy having a rubbish bow and we'll work on a, getting a good bow later on. But yeah, it's really good now that you can use these broken bows to make dispensers because you don't have to keep... Well, you don't need loads of string, let's put it that way. So, got dispensers there. Why is it not, like, letting me do it? Oh, there we go. It's just not coming up in there for some reason. Huh. Interestingly, in the in the crafting recipe book, if you click it, it says you haven't got a bow, but then you just put a broken one and it works fine. So, that's not ideal, but it'll do. And now, because these ones weren't enchanted, I can actually use them. That's bizarre that it works like that, but there we go. It does. Okay, then, at the minute, I've got over a stack of everything except sticky pistons, and I'm pretty, pretty low on slime blocks at the moment, but somebody is selling it at the shopping area, so we're going to go over there and grab that, and I've just made 47 book buttons by mistake. When the crafting table shifts from one thing to another when you're not expecting it to, that's a little bit annoying, but not to worry. 
Okay then, over at the shopping area, a lot has changed. We've got new shops, we've got Fox Mart, we've got this one here, we've got a big barrel over there, we've got a gumball machine, we've got the bank, which I believe they've changed how Pebbles works now. Ah, oh, oh, okay. Wow. Um, Silent and Zloy's end shop's gone, but somebody, wow, wow, has pranked us being able to get to our shop. I assume this is some sort of retaliation for the whole money thing. Right, okay. Okay, fair enough. Can you make these berry bushes go away with water? Is that a thing? Let's have a go. Oh, I didn't bring my ender chest with me, but there is one here. And pig, you're in, you're in the way there, pig. Now, earlier on, I noticed <laughs> this in the chat. Tis Tom saying, accidents happen. And Zap saying, yup, it's a dangerous wor world. I'm sure we'll understand, I'm sure. I think that that means that this is Tiz. I think Tiz has done this. I don't know why he would do this, but yes, we can place water down to get rid of the sweet berry bushes, which is very handy because, uh, yeah, they're completely blocking access to our shop. I can't believe they've done that. What a bunch of meanies. What an absolute bunch of meanies. Naughty, naughty backdoor flappers. Oh, it's actually really easy to break these things with an ax as well, so uh, I didn't need to <laughs> put all that water down and ruin the torches that were everywhere, but... I guess it was just as fast. This torch spam's horrible. This area really does need fixing and sorting out. Okay, here's the slime balls, and they are one diamond for 32. So I'm going to grab a bunch of these because I like slime balls. I don't need that many diamonds. But I'm going to probably grab, I don't know, nine stacks. Is That's only one. That's 32 blocks, though, isn't it? And maybe I should grab more than that. So that's like nine diamonds. Oh, that's expensive. That's expensive slime. We need a slime farm. 18 diamonds was one stack of slime blocks. That's horrendously expensive, but at least we can go make loads of sticky pistons now, so it's not the end of the world. Well, there we go. We've almost got a full redstone box. We've got 64 of pretty much everything. I'm not bothered about having 64 furnaces. We can make those anytime, and we don't have 64 lamps, but we can get those really easily, and I do have some overflow stuff that I'm going to just chuck in here for now. I'll probably use that in today's build which I realise this episode is already going on quite a bit, so there's probably going to be a hefty couple of jumps in a second. But before we do that, I want to make 64 redstone lamps. And the way we're going to do that is we're going to go steal a load of glowstone and redstone off Slack. And it's not really stealing because we're in business together now, and I'm, I'm sure he wouldn't mind at all me doing this. So I don't know if he's already got loads of it already up here. If not, I'll go down to his witch farm. And yeah, in fact, I'll just do that. I'll go down to the witch farm and get it from there. They don't want to... Ooh, he's got a new level. Ooh, very fancy. Lots of smokers on the go. Very good. All right, I'm just grabbing a load of stuff, but this thing's insane. I just keep hearing witches falling down. It's constant. Witch after witch after witch comes down here. It's a good farm, this. He's got loads of glowstones. Look, and look at all his spider eyes. He's got so many spider eyes and empty glass bottles and sugar. And all these sticks. Sticks are really useful. I'll take some of those off his hand. I'm sure he's probably going to use those for fuel at some point, but yeah, that's really handy. So, uh, yeah, thank you very much, Mr. Lizard. I will uh, go and make myself a load of redstone lamps now. And there we go. We now have a stack of redstone lamps as well. This is all coming together very nicely. So let's dump all of this extra stuff in there. And let's get cracking with these builds then. So melon and pumpkin farms. Let's do this. However, we're going to do that in the next video because we have run out of time today. And the reason I'm in here is because I was just going to do a quick check in there. And look, we've got even more iron, which is absolutely fantastic. But... I would like to say at this point, as usual, thank you all very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, do please leave a like. If you haven't already, please do subscribe, and hopefully I'll see you all in the next one. Bye!